All right, we are now live uh, for another episode of the Social Marketing Hour, and today we got a very special one because today I'm going to talk about a subject with my friend Jeremy Ryan Slate, which I'm really, really passionate about, and it's a subject of podcasting. Uh, if uh, you think about podcasting and you think about the, uh, the ability to get a message out throughout the radio and get a lot of attention on this opportunity world of the internet, there's no better person to talk about that subject than my friend Jeremy, and because of that, uh, I'm going to bring him to the show today. Now, hope that you guys have had a great uh, week so far, a great uh, December so far. It's incredible, but we are coming down to the end of one of the most incredible, rare years in the history of this humanity. A lot of people have actually taken advantage of the opportunity and have been booming and expanding. A lot of people have agreed with the world and have um, fallen apart and uh, have um, basically just gave up on dreams and goals and other things, I have expanded like crazy. Uh, and a lot of people that I work with, we have expanded quite a bit. So it is a world in which you can find those opportunities and leverage them. And uh, the subject of today is going to be one of those opportunities. So again, we are live on Facebook. We're live on YouTube. Again, if you're listening to this on the podcast, I do appreciate that very much. Uh, again, this podcast is all going to be, uh, this episode is going to be all about podcasting and all about the basics on how to get started with podcasting. My friend today, uh, he's somebody that i know known for quite a, quite a while already, for a few years. I had the honor and the pleasure of being on his podcast. Uh, it feels like 10 years ago, but I think it was probably like a year and a half, two years ago. Uh, and he has a podcast called Create Your Own Life, which by the way, it's... Uh, Something that, you know, you want to find a name that communicates really well what the podcast is all about. Well, it does, it, it, it really is all about creating your own life. And uh, he has been interviewing people uh, from all over the place, all kinds of incredible people uh, for, for, for several years now that are doing things the right way and are expanding. Uh, he just told me right now when we were setting up for the interview today, he's done over 800 interviews. Talk about persistence, patience, dedication, perseverance, and all the other adjectives that you can think about in the subject of the world of business, marketing, and expansion. He is the example. Today, we're doing a Social Marketing Hour episode number 15. So I want to be like him when I grow up. So we're going to talk about those details, and we're going to talk about the process and how to get started, and we're going to talk about the podcasting opportunity because I have been saying this all along for years now. If you follow my content for one year or for three years or for whatever amount of time, I have been talking about the opportunity of spreading a message through the internet radio for free without having to invest much money on getting this message out heard by people all over the world. So without further ado, I'm going to bring my friend and our guest, uh, Jeremy, to the show and then we're gonna have a great conversation on the subject of podcasting. So Jeremy, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Can you hear me well and see me well, man? Yeah, man. Well, I'm really, really stoked to be here, my friend. Uh, I appreciate the really awesome and really kind uh, acknowledgement and opening there, man. And I'm just you know, excited to teach your people today, man. That's awesome, man. Okay, good. So we can get right into it, man. So can you tell us a little bit about how you got started with the subject of podcasting? Because you've been doing it way before me. Mine, yeah. my podcast was like super random. I just picked up the phone and I said, where do I create a podcast? Oh, I'm going to use this app. We're going to talk about, we can talk about the, the way to start later on. But I was very random. You got into a system, you got into a routine and you really went really deep in that mm -hmm. subject. So tell us a little bit about your story, Jeremy. Yeah, so so it's interesting, man, because like I've always been a podcast listener. Like I've always loved podcasting. Um, I started listening in like '07. Um, I had a really really awesome uh, professor in grad school that uh, looked like Neil Patrick Harris and was funnier than Neil Patrick Harris. He was my uh, <laughs> my my ancient my ancient history teacher, and he actually ended up being my thesis advisor. And I walk into his office one day, and he listen he's listening to what sounds like a mix of the news and a Z100 morning show. Um, so I, I walk in, I'm like, "What is this?" He's like, "It's a podcast." It was called the No Agenda Show. Um, they're on like 1,400 episodes till today, and I've been listening, you know, since that day and, and discovering that show. So I've always kind of been somebody that enjoyed them. And at that point in time, there was that show, and then there was a lot of like audiobooks that were in the public domain. So like podcasting really wasn't much of a, a kind of a thing yet. So I'd always been a listener. And then after I graduated, I ended up uh, teaching high school for a little bit. And uh, in 2012, my mom ended up having a really bad stroke, and it made me look at a, a lot of different things I was doing. And I, I decided, you know, I want to be an entrepreneur, but I didn't really know what that was. So I went through, uh, you know, network marketing, I went full time into it, which everybody thought I was crazy. Did that for a couple of years. I went from there to uh, selling life insurance, which I was good at, um, but I hated being like, so you're going to die. You really, really need this. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and after that, I sold products on Amazon 
Um, and I kind of made the mistake of leaving the get my product for one dollar promo code on my listing. So I like lost everything I had in stock all in one kind of like, dude, it was not it was bad news bears. So like I probably could have made it go right had I had more money at the time. But that was kind of the end of it. So I actually ended I've, up working. I've heard, a, I've heard some of those horror stories, man. That's for sure. <laughs> I, so I ended up working at a friend's marketing firm. Um, I had taught myself how to how to build websites, uh, you know, write HTML and CSS from reading blog posts and watching YouTube videos. So I started a podcast just as a hobby. Um, and it was called Rock Your Life, and it was absolutely horrible. It lasted about sixty days, and literally ninety nine people listened to it. We actually didn't break that hundred. It was it was the worst. <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> I, and love I, it. I think it's I, I love it because now you you fast forward that and you have like millions of downloads and yeah. all these other cool stuff right and it's like you think about there's always there there's always a story man like people yeah. uh it, it's it's i know it's cliche -ish that that we talk about uh oh there's no such thing as overnight success but there really isn't overnight success and it's incredible because when you talk to people like you like me We have so much stories. Last night I was having dinner with my partners and we're talking about, look, there's, there, there's been moments in time in which, wow, like it, it being broke as a joke and the stories that yeah. we've gone through and the failures and the, the things that we've done to try to survive and the, people see the now, they don't see mm -hmm. the journey. And, and that's all part of it. It's like, I, I always tell people, yeah. you got to build your own journey because it's all there for anybody to travel it. If you don't travel it, then you're not going to be able to tell a story later on. But we, we all generally, the ones that accomplish success, uh, just that's mm -hmm. why I know, that's why I love the name of your podcast so much, which is create your own life. Because I, yeah. I believe in that to my heart so well that, that you want to have a better quality of life. I, I mean, mm -hmm. come on guys, just create your own life. Don't wait for things to happen. Go and create it. What do you got to do? Oh, maybe podcasting is one of those things that you got to do and go ahead and create your own life, right? That's what it's yeah. all about. So ever since I saw the name of your podcast, I was like, okay, that, that communicates, right? Okay, good. So let's, <laughs> let, let's work on that. So it, it's a good choice there. Uh, probably you did better with the... Uh, Uh, what was the other one? Create rock, uh, was rock your life. It was it rock was bad, your man. life, okay. and it was trademark too. That was the worst part. I didn't find out until like later that somebody outside a trademark, and I got like a cease and desist letter. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Awesome stuff, man. Okay, good. So yeah, so I can tell you um, uh, because I, I talk a lot about podcasts. I don't yeah. get people the exact strategies or the step sure. by step because I'm a really random guy, Jeremy. Like mm -hmm. I, I have to bring people over the years. Right now we have 75 staff in my organization at AGM and uh, we've been growing like crazy. I have a lot of people that put order because I don't put order myself. So yeah. I don't, I just do. I am mm -hmm. just creating and producing and that's how I operate. So I tell people, look, Yes, when it comes to advertising on social media, I do give them roadmaps and step by steps. But on podcasts, I just say, hey, you guys got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it. Why do you got to do it? Because, hey, it's like imagine going back to 1978 and uh, 97.7 FM station comes to you and tells you, look, I, I decided to give you an entire station to broadcast to the country and you don't have to pay a single penny. Podcasting <laughs> is the same thing. You, you've yeah. been gifted a 97.7 FM station in which you mm -hmm. can broadcast to the world. And sometimes people don't, don't understand that. And, and we take it for granted that, yeah. that this is the world that we live in right now that has presented all these opportunities. And you have something called Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts and Spotify. And, and you have all these places that people are consuming this 97.7 FM station on radio mm -hmm. at a massive scale and it becomes an opportunity. So I tell them that I, I found an easy road. I selected an app, uh, which I'm sure you've heard about called Anchor. And that's, that's what I created. That's what I use for my own podcast. And uh, mm -hmm. I even got, uh, you know, our friend, Dr. Eric Berg, uh, oh, yeah. right? So, so Dr. Berg, uh, uh, he's never, this is something that uh, you might, you might not know about it, uh, Jeremy, but um, I think it was about two years ago only that I, 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 I talked to him and I said, I'm going to create a podcast for you. Don't worry about it. I know you're busy. You don't have to do the podcast yourself. I mean, ideally down the line, we can get you to do individual like podcast episodes meant for podcasts, but I'm going to just use your existing content. And I created an account. I went to anchor.fm 
Um, and I set it up uh, with his information. I, I found a thumbnail, uh, which I've updated, updated a couple times along the way. And I started extracting the audio from his videos. He has 3,000 mm -hmm. videos on YouTube. So I extracted the audio. I used that as a subject line. And I added a little description. And I started uploading those videos, uh, the audio clips, every single day. Very simple. Uh, you, uh, right, right now, I think uh, the platforms have improved quite a bit. You can upload a yeah. link. Uh, to a YouTube video and it extracts the actual audio, simple stuff. So I started doing that uh, two and a half years ago, um, maybe even two years ago only. And I started doing three episodes every single day, every single day. You know how many downloads he gets right now, Jeremy? Uh, I have no idea. 700,000 a week. Wow. 700,000 downloads a week. And he's never done a podcast for the platform. It's just been, we're, we're like, utilizing the existing thing that he has going on already. So mm -hmm. we're doing two and a half million to three million downloads on his podcast every single week. And we have this massive platform right now that he can promote his own stuff and talk about his products. And it's incredible, like massive attention at a broad scale. And that, mm -hmm. that's the process that I did. So it was random. It wasn't organized and structured. So if we're going to talk about a process, Jeremy, because I know that uh, doing things on a systematized way, like with a sequence of, of steps and yeah. with a strategy, it, it, it does actually help you build something more for a long term. So what would mm -hmm. you say about the process and how do you get started on it? Give us some, your feedback on this. So I, I'll, I'll add one thing to what you just said, because that's a really, really great point. So like when I actually started my podcast back in 2015, um, it was not long after I had heard a podcast episode by Grant Cardone where he talked about like this content formula he had. He goes, you make it into a blog. You make that blog into a podcast. You make that into a YouTube video. And then he had all these other things he did with it. And I'm like, whoa, I'm really bad at writing blogs because I'm an academic writer. I could do a podcast. And that was kind of like where that fit in. So I, I totally agree with you. Like if you figure out how to use your content in the right way, you can do it in so many different ways. But for me, I think it's really, really important. Like if you are starting out with the intention of doing this as a podcast and, you know, you kind of have a different format out of it, which is repurposing content. But if you're starting out with a podcast, I really do recommend an interview show. And there's a couple different reasons for that. The one being um, positioning, right? You're going to be seen with people that are influential in your space and build your same influence at the same time. And also the other part of that that people don't think about is networking, right? You're spending time with people that otherwise wouldn't give you the time of day because you have a platform. And I think that's really, really important. So that's the first thing I want to say in starting out with. And when you do that, I always tell people, start out with a list of the top 100 people you most admire and you know people that are really influential in your space. And people are like, oh my gosh, I can't do 100. So here's a hack to that. And that's when you go on Amazon and you look for people that have written books on your topic. And you're going to find people that are much more reachable um, and are going to help you kind of get those first few episodes in. But you really want to start with a big list of people you're reaching out to because you're going to have a lot of no's. Like for me, the first person I reached out to was Seth Godin. And he's like, hey, man, congratulations. He actually answered me. And he's like, when you get to 400 episodes, let me know and we'll do it. So when I got to 390, I let him know and he was episode 400. Um, so but it's really, really important to kind of think big and have a big list because you're going to get some no's. So that's kind of part one. Um, the other part to it is I love that you mentioned Anchor because I always used to recommend uh, Libsyn to people because it is a great platform. But not everybody has the budget, you know, starting out to do that. And Anchor has gotten really good in the last, in the last probably I'd say six months to a year. They've really taken advantage of like things have been kind of weird because of COVID. And they've really made their platform better. So I really recommend Anchor to people because you can start for free. Um, and it kind of lets you get your content out there. Because hosting is something you need. And I always, people always ask me, like, I don't get it. What is hosting? And when you buy hosting for your podcast, it's a place to basically put all your files. So it goes out to all these different places. Like, you don't actually send it to iTunes. You don't actually send it to Spotify. You need a hosting account to hold your files. So that's that's kind of the next part of that. Um, right. In terms that, of that's, yeah. that's a good point right there, right? So like people get really confused on it. That's why I always bring it up. Right. It's being hosted in one particular location, so right. it never goes there. Basically, Correct. Apple comes and gets access to it. Yes. Uh, right. I um, Google get gets access to it. Spotify yeah. gets access to it. All these guys get access to it, but it's being hosted in one place. One thing mm -hmm. before we move on, Jeremy, I, yeah. I, I'd like to ask you. I don't know if you heard about this, but big fan of Anchor myself. I've been doing it because of the simplicity of it. Let me tell you yeah. what. What is the thing that I was, uh, because if you go to Libsyn, right, which I actually have experience with that because not at, not at your level, but I, I, my, my initial hosting. Uh, There's for, a lot to it. For my dad's podcast, uh, which, uh, you know, we have, uh, obviously, you know, my dad also, he has a lot. We have a lot of content. 
So I started doing the same thing for him years ago, way before Anchor. And the thing with Libsyn was great hosting, but you had to go and create the accounts on, on Apple and you had to create the accounts over here. I don't know if yeah. that has changed, but uh, that's the way that it was. And then I had to make the connections and all those things. It was things that were over my head. When mm -hmm. I opened up Anchor, uh, I just had to open up Anchor. And yeah. I, I press a few buttons and I uploaded uh, an audio clip and, and, uh, and they will submit to all these places. Uh, they will get the account set up for me. And, and mm -hmm. that was a beautiful thing about it. Now, one thing that I'll ask you, I don't know if you've seen any changes. I saw some changes. For example, I created a new podcast uh, and we, I have my podcast called the Facebook Marketing Ninja Podcast. Yeah. On that podcast, I upload three times a week all kinds of stuff and uh, my interviews with like with some clients and uh, and uh, brainstorming sessions with staff and uh, video clips and I'm extracting the audio and I'm all over the place not only interviews like with you and I and I do get um, I think I'm gonna get close to 300,000 downloads right now so I do get some attention on the platform and it's great now I created another one uh, called the social marketing hour and that's this. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm doing now only the episodical content on that particular podcast. So mm -hmm. there's a, this is episode number 15. As soon as we're done, we're going to extract that audio. And we're going to upload it there on Anchor. Now, one thing that I noticed that was different, uh, Jeremy, I don't know if, uh, if this has changed on Anchor or uh, something happened with Apple uh, that made it different, but it was not submitted to Apple automatically. And mm. we, were, we were forced to I've create I've seen an that too, by the way. So I don't know. I was surprised. I was like, I saw my staff requesting access to the Apple account and I'm like, what's going on? And oh, we're trying to get the, uh, the podcast on, on Apple Podcasts. And I'm like, wait a second, that happens automatically. And when I looked at it, that option was not even available there. So, so something might have changed on the agreements within Apple, maybe the, some privacy rules, whatever the case may be. So there are going to be some things that you need to look at if you're creating this to make sure that you get distribution across all these platforms it seems like it's a little bit more work that than used to be right now yeah. that's that's what what i observed so you, yeah. you've heard about that happening before yeah Jamie? so so i'll say like with libsyn um you still have to submit apple there just like you've always had to um it does do the other platform ads pretty automatically for you now you just click a couple buttons which is really easy um, so that's cool. But I, I have seen the same thing with Anchor where you do have to submit your uh, RSS feed like manually. Like you just have to do it. Um, and it's Apple's kind of weird with their security and like allowing people access to their RSS and stuff like that. So if, if you want a like multi-million dollar idea, um, if somebody can figure out how to get into Apple's RSS feed and tell people how many downloads there are for different people's episodes, you're going to be like a gazillionaire because um, nobody's been able to figure out how to do it. <laughs> so you don't, have, you don't have a way to find out how many downloads... Uh, that's a that's such a good uh, question publicly for you publicly now <laughs> right? yeah so there, so so you have to bas basically if i tell you that i got 300,000 downloads there's I have no to way for it. you to confirm you have to believe it right that is not so available that, huh? that that's so that's why we actually as a, as command your brand since we book people on podcasts that's like one of the things we developed our own kind of metrics for right because you're never going to totally know because there's no governing body out there there really isn't i know like they're trying to do a better job with iab but there's no like public numbers out there so we look at a few different things. We look at um, number of reviews because um, it's not always going to be a huge, you know, it's going to be the top indicator for a reason of you have to have a large audience to get reviews. They're just hard as heck to get. We also look at um, their like ranking in Apple podcast historically. We look at it in a trend over 30 days um, because somebody could have a good week and just bump up because Apple podcast is actually ranked by the number of new subscribers you get in ratio to your current subscribers on a daily basis. So like if you're kind of historically, you know, in a good range there, that's good. And then we also look at social media. So based on that, we're able to find out like what a great show looks like, but unless somebody can ever get into Apple podcast, you know, API, you're just, you're not going to know that. So like if somebody can do that, man, that's a multi-million dollar idea and, you know, go figure it out. <laughs> right. No, that, that, would, that would be powerful. Now, now, Jeremy, I do see that still today when I look at the metrics uh, that yeah. Apple, Apple takes the cake maybe still at 85% of all the downloads. It's Is come down a lot more than that. It's yeah. come, come down a lot more than that. Um, Apple's still around anywhere from 50 to 60%, depending on like what platform you look at. Because I know like, it's also individual platforms that give out the stats. Like Libsyn will tell you like, this is what ours look like. Simplecast will say, this is what ours look like. Um, so like Apple's, depending on who you ask, they're about 60%. Spotify um, two years ago was only at 9%. Um, and now they're closing in on, in on the high 30s. And then there's like, I think like 50 other different places you can listen to podcasts that account for like less than 5% altogether. So wow. like it's, 
Apple Podcasts and Spotify are the main thing. Uh, and you'd think Google would be big, but it just it really isn't because it's just people either listen in one of those two places because Spotify has grown so quickly. So Spotify actually took off in a big way, right? Huge this year, yeah. They're trying to buy the space is what they're trying to do. Wow. Because they're buying amazing. production companies and everything else. Right. So it's, it's, a, it's a platform to pay attention to. And I know they also had, uh, like, I know that you can, you can even add tags to your episodes and, and yeah. Spotify is making it more discoverable uh, on the platform and, and such and such. So Yeah, so and you can a- also create, a, as a podcaster, you can go in um, um, Spotify for Podcasters. I don't remember the exact website, but if you go to Spotify for Podcasters, they'll give you, like, even more data on your streams than po- uh, Spotify, like your rankings and stuff like that of your podcast. You just have to claim it. Right. Right. Okay, good. So I wanted to just check in with you on that because uh, it's something that I observed recently. So let's go on yeah. with uh, what you were explaining to us on, on the process, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like I was saying, like you, you want to first and foremost, interview shows are the way to go for the position you're getting. Two, you want to start with the, the 100 people that you admire most or are most impactful in your space. And if you can't fill out 100, go to Amazon. That's really, really important. Um, another thing that I learned big time um, from a guy that I'm sure you know um, that's been a huge help to me is David Breyer. Um, and David talks about, you know, differentiating, right? Because you need to be different. Otherwise, people look at you and you're the same as everybody else out there. So I tell people, if you're going to start a podcast, you have to figure out what's different about what you're doing. Like there's 200,000 people that have done the exact same show as Entrepreneur on Fire, and that's why you can't name them. So you have to figure right. out what's different about what you're going to talk about on your show. And you really have to dig that in. That's really, really important. Um, and then after that, I talk about content calendar because content calendar, and that means how many days a week you publish. Um, I can tell you right away that unless you're famous, one day a week to start out with is not going to work for you. You know, you usually need two to three episodes a week. I have three, you know what I mean? Because I started out with five and I realized five was too much. I went down to three and that's kind of where I've been for four years. So I tell people you want to have a content calendar and do not miss an episode because that's an agreement that you have with your audience. And once you start breaking that agreement, you know, you can, you know, lose audience, you can lose trust and stuff like that. So it's really important to kind of keep that trust and that agreement of that. Um, Then around that, the reason a lot of people, you know, don't do good with their content calendars, don't do well with their content calendars, they're not putting a future there, right? They're not saying like, okay, this is what it looks like. So the thing that I've done since day one is I do a running spreadsheet um, in Google Sheets where we have every single episode for the next 60 days planned out. And that's really, really, really important because you can then, you know, holidays happen, right? Family stuff happens. Like your business may have something going on. You don't want one of those things to affect this agreement you have with your audience. That's something you're trying to grow to impact more people. So that takes a lot of planning, right? It It takes a lot of planning. Yeah. Right. And persistence also. And, And I would say that there's a big word here, discipline. Uh, it, it, you got to be really serious about it. I mean, in, yeah. in, in Jer- Jeremy's case, you, you built a business around it. So yeah. it's, it's, uh, it, it's, there's no easy way to explain this to you guys. It's like if you don't, if you don't have a system in place, like long-term being a professional, mm-hmm. then I don't do it as professional as that. That's for sure. Uh, and <laughs> I, I, I definitely want to go next level. Now, I do have a billion things uh, uh, going on. We do 400 publications on social media a week. Yeah. As you know, that, you know, what Jeremy just said right now, if you want to get discovered, one a week is not going to do it. Um, mm-hmm. Same thing that I talk about on social media and omnipresence and being everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like, what are, what are your goals? How big are they? Uh, yeah. how, how, uh, how big are your dreams overall? And you got to make sure that your actions match that particular ambition. And in my case, I know that the more that I do, the more possibilities I have to find people like you that are going to yeah. be interested in what my message is and I'm going to lead you down a customer journey. So it, it's, it's, it's that thing that you need to put in place that depends on, that's going to help you actually get to where you want to get to and you got to put that mm-hmm. routine in place to make it happen. I love the idea of a content calendar. Um, the, the, the longer that you can make it, the more that you can actually come and deliver to these guys and, uh, mm-hmm. and just continuously provide that value. Has it happened to you? Does it happen to you sometimes, Jeremy, that you're like, man, I wish I didn't have that schedule today. I don't feel like doing this. I want to hang out with my kids and my wife. And has that happened to you before? So let me just touch on what you just said real quick, because I think that's really important. And then I'll get to that if that's cool. Um, Because the the point you made there about professionalism is vital. And if anybody takes one thing away from today, that's the thing you need to take away. Um, And that was the difference between my first podcast and my second podcast. Um, You know, I read an article uh, by L. Ron Hubbard called Professionalism. And he talks about the difference between a professional versus being a dilettante, right? Like somebody that just kind of dabbles and does a little bit. And when I looked at my first podcast, that's why it didn't go well, man. 
professionalism is literally just a viewpoint thing. You're deciding what would a professional do and what would I have to do to be a professional at this? It doesn't mean you're going to go out there and, you know, sign a Joe Rogan $100 million contract. It's the viewpoint thing. So that's the one thing I want to add to that because that's really, really important. Um, in terms of like what you're saying about like, um, you know, the things happen with interviews. So the thing that I've actually done um, is I've really like collapsed my interview schedule a lot. And um, I only do them at certain times now. Um, so that I can make time for family and make time for business and whatever it is. Now, I, I will say there's like when you get somebody somewhat famous, um, you kind of do whatever you have to do to get that interview because they're usually going to give you just one shot um, and you kind of right. have to bend for that. So like um, I interviewed uh, my former my former New York Yankee, my favorite baseball player, Nick Swisher. Um, Nick said, I can do it tomorrow at this time. I'm like, OK, I'm in. Or, or last week I, I interviewed... Uh, two-time uh, world heavyweight champion Riddick Bow, And Riddick was like, I can do the interview tomorrow. I'm like, okay, I'm in. So, so some of those you have to understand, like you're probably not going to get the shot again and you have to go for it. But otherwise, like I know a lot of times I'm doing things in the morning. So when I do podcasts for my own show, I only do them between 12 and 4. Um, and I only do them on, you know, two, wen two Wednesdays a month and two Fridays a month and they alternate weeks. And so based on that, you try to make a lot of stuff work for your family. But in the beginning or when somebody's famous, you kind of have to just agree to it because if you don't have enough standing when you're starting out, you have to just agree to it. Um, or if somebody's you know, really famous, they're, you're going to get one shot at that. Right. And, then, and when you actually get these people on the show, mm -hmm. that credibility becomes permanent. It's yeah. like nobody's going to take it away from you. you yeah. know, it's, 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 it's a little piece of real estate in the digital land. And that's so valuable because some of these people are legendary in our world. And you've interviewed people that are celebrities in the real world. And then you've interviewed people that are celebrities on social media. And, and these guys keep on growing and you had them on your show. And it is a big point, a major point for you. Like I, I have a lot of uh, connections that I've built along the way. And, and these connections, uh, it, it just keeps you moving forward. And I, and I think mm -hmm. that's a big part of uh, the, the idea of the interview show. The valuable thing about the interview show is that, first of all, you learn from these powerful people, right? You, you get on the right mindset. But then also at the same time, you have that credibility built on because you were able to get these people on your show to pay attention, to talk to you. And that actually can help you keep on growing your business. Right, Jeremy? Yeah. And, and the thing I'll say to the, too is like right now you and I are on video. And I've learned within the last couple of years that like video is just like vital because it does add another layer to that positioning. You know what I mean? Like you're being seen with these, you're being heard with these people and that's great. Um, but being seen because those like, you know, what are called valuable images are really, really important. And that's why, um, you know, if you can find a way to capture video, like we're doing now, like that's really, really important because I know for us, we also repurpose episodes on YouTube. Um, and right. maybe we don't get a ton of views on YouTube, but I, it's the second largest search engine in the world. So we get a lot of discoverability from YouTube. So people come out and find you from there. Right. Yeah, you're multiplying the content. You can grab an yeah. interview that's one hour in length, for example, this interview that you and I are doing, and we're going to break that up into a bunch of different clips. And that becomes mm -hmm. like how we keep on building top of the funnel audiences. Correct. And that's part of the cool thing about uh, doing this in, in this particular format. Now, Jeremy, talking about uh, um, a particular subject that I keep on being asked about is podcasting for just marketers and businesses or what would you say like we have a lot of people here tuning in live or or listening to the podcast they, they they've been following our content for a while they they want to learn social media advertising they're trying to get more attention for their business they have products they have services they offer they have uh, uh software they don't have really like our business like you and i that you know mm -hmm. we we have a, an agency type right you're, you're like servicing yeah. people with um, your uh, command your brand uh, i'm servicing people with my marketing services for my agency uh, when we do podcasting, uh, we have a big audience of entrepreneurs out there uh, that are consuming that content when they're mm -hmm. driving uh, to, to the offices or doing exercise. Because people that are professionals, uh, they, they tend to not sit down and consume video. Because these guys yeah. that are professionals, uh, they, they actually generally, they don't have the time to do that. They, they right. don't have the time to sit down and watch Facebook or Instagram, etc. So our audience is really on podcasts. They really are there consuming that content. But what would you mm -hmm. say, because I am of the opinion, I, never, I have not personally seen many people that I know personally uh, very uh, successfully get this done. But let's say that you have a brand, a product, um, example, Natural Slim brand, uh, which we sell supplements and weight loss. Uh, what would you say is the opportunity for 
any brand out there to just create a podcast and what would you be your advice for them to get this done? So uh, I guess there's two parts to this and one part you may not like, and that's that I see, I see podcasting as primarily like a public relations thing. Um, it really, in my mind, is a PR action that what you do with the podcast is a marketing action, right? How you repurpose it, like we were talking about, how you retarget audiences that hear it is, is, is that way. So the thing I want brands to understand is you don't just turn this thing on and it's a lead engine. You know what I mean? I think a lot of times people have this, this false idea that, you know, I'm going to just go on a podcast and the leads are just going to roll in. That may happen. Like we've had clients that like, hey, you know, they have a health product. They're on a podcast. They sold $50,000 worth of product on that podcast. And that was awesome. Um, but they're, they're, they're really the, the key point to it is it's a public relations thing. You're creating trust with people that haven't heard of you before. You're, you're going to say something? I'm in 100% agreement with that, by the way. 100% agreement. It is okay, a good. long-term positioning of your brand, of your message. And mm -hmm. it doesn't even have to be about the products. Actually, it shouldn't be about the products. Yeah. Uh, you, you are just going to find something that you can give to the world and give them entertainment, give them education, give them mm -hmm. some kind of value that's going to help them improve a particular area of their lives. Yeah. That could be making them laugh. That could be making them stronger. I mean, I've seen some shows, some of the biggest podcasts in the world are... Mm -hmm. um, I, I was looking at one the other day doing some research. Um, Dr. Death, for example. I think that's what it's called. Uh, I listened to that a, one, yeah. You, you listen to that one. It's, it's just entertainment. It's like, yeah. uh, it's like, a, a, like a novel that you want to listen to a story about this, the, these guys that, that were like freaking dark. And it's like real life stories. And it's awesome entertainment. But you know what, yeah. they, what they do? Because they build so much attention on this platform, they yep. now sell commercials and they have Correct. this as a business. So it, it's not really like a product. They are a media company. They are Correct. providing education and value and entertaining people. Uh, and now they can actually sell Facebook type. They can sell advertising like Google, like Correct. Facebook, like CNBC, etc. So that is a roadmap for if you want to build something long term, like somebody mm -hmm. like Dr. Berg, he's getting two and a half million downloads uh, a month right now. Would you say mm -hmm. that's a lot on podcasts? No, that, that's more than 97% of the podcasts out there. So, so I would imagine that there's going to be a lot of brands that would mm -hmm. die to pay Dr. Berg some money to be a part of the show. Especially Correct. keto, keto diet, keto brands, right? Somebody that sends, yeah. that sells like a nut bag or like sells some kind of like a keto friendly desserts or whatever. They will pay a lot of money. So long term, this gives you security. So just going in line with uh, what Jeremy said, it, it's it's a really long term action, which is so incredibly important. I mean, I don't mm -hmm. know. I, I'm sure that Jeremy, for this is for you. This is so at a whole different, different scale because you've been doing it for so much longer than me and so much yep. better than me. But in my case, uh, I do a lot of social media content uh, and you know that. Um, again, we, we have a statistic that uh, I'm always pushing. Uh, if we add up all the platforms, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, um, uh, TikTok, which I'm not really active on recently, um, all these platforms, right? If you add them all up, I am averaging anywhere from 350 to 400 posts a week. So it's mm -hmm. quite a bit. Still, when I go to events, when I go to activities, when I go to parties, which it's not the same with COVID, still people tell me, oh, Manuel, I've been listening to your podcast for so long. I want to thank you so yep. much for your value. I can tell you that I listen to that particular sentence more than I listen to the, oh, I've been following you on social media. For some reason, that's just the way it is. So it well, is a long-term really positioning. Yeah, that's the really, really, really key point. Like a podcast is the best positioning and the best relationship building tool you can have. And, and, and that's why I really appreciate that you made the comparison uh, with radio earlier, because I think at the same time, like you get better exposure on a podcast than you'd ever get on radio, right? Because people, if they're on radio as like a guest, they're on there for like six minutes at the most or something like that. Like on a podcast, like episodes are you know we're here for an hour mine are 45 minutes like people are spending a substantial amount of time with you so the relationship building and the trust building is vital and and that's where you know it's kind of this amazing pr vehicle because you get positioning you're seeing with people that are important but at the same time you're creating trust with the people you need to create trust with now if you're like yourself and you're a crazy super ninja um you realize like what to do with this stuff so you mentioned like breaking it up into different content pieces but also at the same time um you should have uh, a pixel on your website where you're doing 30, 60, 90 day audiences of people that come from your podcast um, because then you can retarget those people and start giving them some of your offers. That's where the value comes in, right? They hear about you. 
the value where you make money is by retargeting the people that have heard about you because now they've gotten past the awareness thing and the money is in the is is after the awareness. The other tool that I really really love that everybody should should be using um, is it's called getemails.com. Uh, and getemails.com, you, they put a piece of code on your website and they have a massive database of people that have opted in for, uh, you know, like different offers and stuff. So their emails are totally white hat and stuff. But basically, they recognize, oh, this person's been to your site and they opt them into your list. So then you wow. I have like a seven day sequence that goes with that. Well, hold on a second. Okay, so <laughs> there's, there, there's two things that I want to break down here. Okay, yeah, wait yeah. a second, right? Yeah. So going back to the thing that you said just before that, um, yeah. we're talking about retargeting. So, Correct, Facebook um, retargeting. I, I, I absolutely am retargeting like madmen, right? Like yes. it, I'm insane with that particular subject. On podcasts, I'm an utter failure on the subject of retargeting. Now, oh, you need to be retargeting, if, bro. If you go to my website, uh, if you go to manuelsuarez.com, uh, which is my blog, there is yeah. a section there in which I put all the podcast episodes and they have a little mm -hmm. transcript, but uh, I don't think anybody cares about it. My podcast mm -hmm. downloads are all happening on the platforms, whether right. that's Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Google Podcasts or all these places. So I don't have that data. Uh, can you confirm or deny that we have no ability to retarget people that are consuming Apple Podcasts or Spotify? That would be correct, but that's why like, if you have a good show notes page, I know we drive a lot of traffic to our site from the podcast. So like you want to have a good show notes page and yeah, you're going to get maybe 10, 20% of it. But if you're doing that over time and that builds on top of itself and you're retargeting those people, that's really valuable. Um, and that's like as a host, but also as a guest, like when you're going on other people's show and you're saying, Hey, I got this free offer for you. It's, you know, Manuel Suarez.com slash blah, blah, blah. Like you should be retargeting the heck out of that as well. So like you need to be thinking of, like I call it the leaky bucket, right? You need to be looking at when I'm sending people someplace, you know, where can I plug up the holes in the bucket? And that's where I look at retargeting. That's where I look at uh, email retar capture retargeting, like get emails and stuff like that. So like you want to figure out how can I capture as many identities as possible um, with all this trust I'm creating. Right. So, so here's, what, here's what, uh, what I'm doing, Jeremy. And you, can, yeah. and you can give me some advice on this since I have you on the call we can make this a, a personal consultation, all right? Because I know that you're an expert on this area. So what I'm doing right now is that we have an advertising budget and we spend it every month and it's all based mm -hmm. on our income and that's strategic, right? Always, always yeah. we spend it. And uh, we, we spend that money on advertising our content. We don't spend the money advertising our podcast. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's uh, what, what we currently get when it comes to podcast downloads, which we do pay attention to it, and we do have a graph, and we do measure it, and we do push for it, et cetera. It's all 100% organic. Now, yeah. would, you, would you suggest, Jeremy, that the right way to do it, I mean, we do have it on the website. We don't have the show notes as powerful as you have them. Uh, we have the anchor player hosted on the website. It's embedded mm -hmm. on the website. Uh, and then we have like the subject and we have a transcript of the podcast and it's an ever going like nonstop uh, feed of these particular podcast episodes. Would you mm -hmm. suggest that we start running some advertising towards, hey, you want to listen to this podcast? Go to the show note episode right here. And obviously never, it wouldn't make any sense because you don't have the ability to retarget people. It mm -hmm. wouldn't make any sense that you go from Facebook to Apple Podcasts, from Facebook mm -hmm. to Spotify, because you missed yeah. that connection. So w w would you say that the best way to go about it is like you want to, you have a hot episode, like for example, uh, in this episode, I interview the legendary Jeremy Ryan Slate, who's done over 800 episodes on <laughs> podcasts that has persistence and patience and perseverance and has been able to build his business from the ground up with the power of podcasting. And he's going to break it all down into a journey that you can travel yourself, mm -hmm. right? Come listen to the podcast. Instead of yeah. sending them to the Apple podcast, these people, they can go from Facebook. Uh, oh yeah, I want to listen to that podcast. And they go to the homepage. And then mm -hmm. not the homepage, but the show note page. And then on yeah. that page, would you say that you can add options to like, hey, do you want to listen to this on Apple or iTunes or, uh, or Spotify or whatever? Click that's, here. That's the key right there. That's the key right there. But so at you that point, you already have the audience, right? At that point, you already have the audience, mm -hmm. right? They visited you. So, okay. So that's the key right there. Why is that? So the key right there is having a good podcast player on your site. So I actually, um, uh, I'm on WordPress. So I use one, I think it's called, uh, really, it's called Simple Podcast Player. I think I can, I can double check for you later. But basically what it does 
is you can stream right on the site or I have it set up so it goes to, you can go right to the Spotify link. You can go right to the Apple Podcast link. You can go right to these places. So my audience knows that, hey, if they don't want to search, they can go right to the episode right from my site and they don't have to search on their phone or whatever. So like th that's the real, th having a good podcast player on your site is key to making all this stuff work because you're making it so everybody knows if I go one place, I can find your episode on any platform I want to listen to it on. Um, so I, I believe it's called Simple Podcast Player. It's a, it's a, it's a, you pay for it like one time. It's like 60 bucks and you can embed it right on the, right on the site. It does a, a special player for, it hooks up to your, your uh, Apple podcast feed. And then every time a podcast episode is published, it creates the posts on your site. And then the player that I've customized sends them to each one of those places. Like um, if, if you check one of my latest show notes posts, you'll kind of see how I do it. And that's really, really, really important because then the only link we're promoting is the show notes page. We're not promoting the Apple link. We're not promoting the Spotify link. The, when, in all of our promotion, we're promoting that link. So then when we retarget, um, we're also retargeting only people that have gone to um, any page with, you know, slash podcast before it. You know what I mean? So that way we're making sure we're retargeting just those people. You know, we're kind of, uh, we're blocking out any of the other URLs on their site. So does, does that make sense? I, I think my team right now is getting some uh, aha moments and they're <laughs> probably listening to this a little mind blown and excited about that. So uh, obviously Anchor has its own player, uh, yeah. but, but that's going to have limitations. You're not capturing anything from that though. Right. So, the, but, but I, 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 can, I can embed the player. No, you're right. But that's if I send them to anchor.fm, uh, which mm -hmm. by the way, it's anchor.fm forward slash uh, Facebook Ninja, I think it is. And then you yeah. land on the, the page, which is hosted inside Anchor. But mm -hmm. we do have the embedded player from Anchor in our website. So I am okay. capturing that. Cool. But, but I don't think it's the, it gives us the ability that you just talked about. So I think it's probably and that's like... Important. So it's something that I don't even know existed. It's almost, it's like, it goes back to this, uh, I mean, one of the greatest lessons that I have learned in life over the years, Jeremy, mm -hmm. I've had a lot of things happen. Uh, I mean, I, you, you might know a little bit of my history. I was a part of your show. I was bankrupt in 2010. I built myself along the way. My biggest lesson of all, if I, if I, would, if I, if I was asked the question, Manuel, what is the number one lesson that you learned in your entire life that led you towards expansion and growth mm -hmm. and success one sentence you don't know what you don't know wow what a sentence man right there yeah. once you discover things you get to realize the opportunities that you missed out along the way so something simple like that is uh it could be so powerful the reason why we're not doing it enough i mean i'm a big advertiser i am mm -hmm. a, i am such a believer in investing yeah. not spending investing money on getting people to pay attention uh, yeah. in, in, I'm a believer in guaranteed negative return on investments. Why? Because I'm building an audience. I'm building people. I'm building Awareness. connections. I'm, I'm getting these people to start trusting in me, credibility, etc. So I, my advertising budget does not get promoted uh, towards getting people to buy my products or services. I don't spend a penny selling AGM marketing services. And I'm talking about literally, Jeremy, I don't spend a penny. I mm -hmm. spend every single dollar over here. I invest every dollar on the branding side of things, getting people to see who I am so Correct. I can give them a chance to give them some value. And it's, by doing it's so... It's no like and trust factor. Like if they don't know who you right. are and they don't trust you, they don't know what this service is and if they even need it from you. You know what I mean? Right. The way that I look at it, Jeremy, is that I am trying to earn the right to be able to make them an offer along the line. And if yeah. I haven't provided value to them along the way, if I haven't educated them, if I haven't inspired them, I don't think I have the right to do so. So when, when you look at my agency and the people that I have over here, I have, uh, it's built on two types of people. Number one, people that are my followers, my fans that have consumed my content, people that have become believers in my mission. Number two, people that have been referred by these guys that have had success. I don't have anybody else here. So I don't, I don't go and convince somebody of what I do and how I work and how I get results. I come mm -hmm. and have people that want to be a part of us because I've been building this brand and this audience and showing these guys that I can help them. So again, that, that right there, guys, is a really, really hot tip. Uh, if you want to advertise your podcast, there is an audience for that. The way I see this, and, and Jeremy, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. there's a certain audience on podcasts that is not yeah. on social media. There, there's a certain audience that if you're not on podcast, you're never going to reach 
because these guys don't have time to open up Facebook and spend a lot of time on it or open up Instagram or watch YouTube videos or go to TikTok for that matter. There's people that are on podcasts only and they want to get their information there. So if you don't do this, you're going to miss mm -hmm. out on a whole segment of the population that all they do is listen to stuff. Mm -hmm. Would you agree to that, Jeremy? No, I would absolutely agree. And I was looking for it right here just so I could like definitely tell you before I got off here. The, the product is called Simple Podcast Press. Um, that allows me to kind of have all those players in one, on that page. But I would, I would agree, man. It's You have to have people that are as much a fan of what you're doing as you are. You know what I mean? Like it, if you don't have somebody on board with purpose, then, you know, kind of what's the point? It's really, really important. Simple Podcast Press. I'm yep. writing it down because my team needs to get on this ASAP. And then the other um, thing I mentioned is is getemails.com. Uh, we've we've doubled our email list since February. It's a great product. Okay, uh, can you tell me what that is all about? Because I I was yeah. just like uh, <laughs> I wanted to go back to the early thing. So getemails.com. Yeah. So um, you know it's no secret. Um, people that you give your email address to sell it online. Most most retailers and stuff like that. That's just kind of how it works. So what getemails.com is um, is it's a email capture retargeting service. Totally white hat. Totally legal. Like you know, Canam compliant and all that all that kind of stuff. Um, but what 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 it does is they have a massive database of all the people that have that have opted in all these different sites. You know, uh, I I don't quite know what companies they work with, but they have a massive database. So they can take about 30% of, um, of your anonymous web traffic and turn it into email subscribers. So what happens is they'll say, okay, this person's in our database. Great. We're going to opt them into Manuel's list. So then the really important thing to do, though, is um, like we use Active Campaign for our email marketing. Um, is you have like a, we do a seven-day email sequence, but you know, you, just, you could do one or two. But you want to have that person, once they get opted in, go into a seven-day email sequence because it... They, they're, they're always wondering, like, how do I get here? If you get a broadcast email right away, they're going to unsubscribe. So you put them in a sequence so you kind of create some trust before you ever, you know, you wait a full week before you send them a broadcast. But you can take 30% of these people that wouldn't opt in for anything or haven't opted in, add them to your list, create the trust with a seven, five to seven day sequence, and then you have, you know, more people you can basically email to uh, in broadcast emails. So, like, we've doubled our list since February. Wow. Wow, well, that's a hot tip right there, guys, that you can uh, take a look at to see if it's going to help you get more identities. As you guys know, uh, we've been, I've talked about this throughout a long time. You've got to bring that down. Um, Steve, uh, I've talked about this for a long time. You've got to make sure that the money is in, you have enough people on your list. Uh, the money's yep. in the list, like they say in the world of marketing. You've got to make sure that you have enough people so you can actually get them through your systems and your journey. Okay, so get mm -hmm. emails dot com is something to check out all right so okay jeremy so uh, i want to go back to sort of go back to the subject of uh the regular uh brand owners that are not yeah. really business marketers so let's say that uh somebody owns a supplement brand or let's say somebody owns like a toy business uh you jeremy if you had to uh get a podcast started on that subject and you maybe you want to do the interview subject and you want to interview people about the world what would you do to start getting positioning and branding for your long-term brand overall as a product owner? So the, the thing I would do, and this is the, the thing that people don't think of, right, is you want to realize, like, um, you know, what does your perfect listener look like in that space, right? Because like, everybody's like, oh, my listener looks like this. They're however many years old. They have this many kids or whatever. Now, the thing they don't think of is who are that person's opinion leaders, and I, and I always give the example of this, right? Like you can have in the financial space, there's people that are really listening to Susie Orman. There's people that are really listening to Dave Ramsey, but they won't listen to both, right? So once you kind of get down further in that and figure out who your, who your actual favorite listeners, uh, opinion leaders are, you're going to kind of create even better content from them. And that's going to help you really decide like what do they need to hear and how they need to hear it. And then you can realize, how do I need to differentiate from that a little bit? You, you want to get a little bit granular in this, but that's because you're create, trying to create something long term here. You're trying to create something people are going to kind of go with. Don't create just a general, another general entrepreneurship show, show. You want to have something that's niched down enough, but at the same time, it thinks with who are the person I want to reach as opinion leaders so that you're communicating to them in the way that they need to receive communication so that you actually make an impact. And I think that's really, really, really vital, and it's something a lot of people miss. Right. Uh, it, it's something for, for any of you guys to really consider. I mean, there's, there's, I know of many brands that have, been, uh, have exploded, just yeah. because uh, there's a podcast that has had success 
and has gotten a lot of attention and uh, they've been able to connect their brands, which have absolutely nothing to do with the subject, to yeah. the particular podcast. An example of that is uh, when you look at somebody that we all know in the world of business and marketing, Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary Vaynerchuk has a company that is owned by his father called Wine Library. And Wine Library has absolutely taken advantage of Gary's enormous attention on mm -hmm. his podcast and all on his uh, overall um, platforms. When, when he talks about Wine Library, he sells a crap load of wine. Why? Because he has attention. <laughs> so so the, the, the name of the game is attention. If you get attention, you get business. If you don't have attention, you don't get business. It's as simple as that. So the subject of the podcast has to go more in line with what you feel that you can go Jeremy Ryan Slate style and talk mm -hmm. about it for 800 episodes for yep. years and never get tired of it. I mean, Correct. I can tell you people like Jeremy and myself, we don't get tired of talking about success. We don't get tired to talk about expansion, about marketing, about strategies, about business. It's a subject that we can keep talking about forever. It never runs out. Sometimes we have to probably be uh, asked by our wives to put our phones down and stay quiet and talk about something else and stop thinking about things because it's something that we are so passionate about that it's very difficult to get away from it. So you got to find that subject because otherwise, if you, uh, would you agree, Jeremy, that if you are not passionate about what you're going to be doing on that podcast, you're yeah. not going to be able to hit home. People are not going to like it. Because well, if you're, if you're not excited, how can you expect anybody else to be excited? You know what I mean? Like, like people feed off of your enthusiasm, excitement, and interest. Right. And I would say that's an important element to a podcast. You've got to be excited about the subject. You've got to want to communicate about it. You've got to really mm -hmm. believe in that. And if you don't, don't even get started because you might, you might just waste your time. Now, granted, yeah. if you have a certain ability to communicate and you feel that you might be able to develop this passion, well, then for, for all means, go for it and see if you develop that into a fire passion and just get it going and uh, see if you can break uh, Jeremy's 99 number on... Um, what was it? What was it again, Jeremy? The uh, rock your world, rock your world. You, oh, rock, maybe, maybe, you, rock maybe your you can do more. Maybe you can do more than Jeremy and uh, break the ninety-nine downloads, right? Oh, that was that was bad, man. That was pathetic. It was like I didn't have a microphone. It was like, and this was back in the days of like my computer was an iBook G four, so you can imagine like just everything was crap. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, Jeremy. So we got a couple of minutes left, Jeremy. Yeah. Uh, if if we were to give people uh, a five step. Uh, sequence of steps yeah. to get done. People that want to get execution done. Like they, they're yeah. ready to get going. Okay, good. Yeah. I'm going to start the podcast even though I don't know what the heck I'm doing. What do they do and uh, what will be the steps to follow, Jeremy? So step one, like I said, is get down your topic and make sure you're differentiating enough. Step two is write down the people in your space you want to speak to, which is really, really, really important. Step three is figure out um, you know, what your content calendar is going to be is vital. And then step four, um, I would say get hosting. You know, you want to get good hosting. Uh, we mentioned Anchor. That's really good and easy. Step five, promote the heck out of it. You have to just be willing to just get it out there to every single person possible and talk, 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 talk. Um, the number one thing that's going to rank your show in any one of these platforms is subscribers. So knowing that, you want to please subscribe to my show. 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 Like, yeah, like download my podcast is great, but subscribing to your show is what gets you in front of more people. So if you know your key statistics, you can push for more growth. So subscribing, uh, that's a little, uh, little plus sign that you see on yep. Apple Podcasts that makes you subscribe. That, that's the number one thing. Huh? I didn't know that. I thought it was reviews. Number one. Number wow. one. Reviews, has, reviews are cool and they're great for social proof, but they actually have very little um, influence on ranking. It's actually one oh, of the wow. lower things. It's a hierarchy. The first thing is, is the number of subscribers in a 24-hour period in ratio to your current subscribers. Um, the second thing is downloads. Third thing is, is reviews. But reviews matter very little uh, in comparison to the other two. Like You can do a lot more with subscribes than you can with downloads or reviews. Right. So if you, were gonna, if you guys are going to build a promotional calendar or like how do you get this thing to be known out there, if you have a list of people, you're going to hit them hard and let them know that you have a podcast. Uh, these same people, you're going to have them uh, ask you to subscribe. You're going to ask them to subscribe to your channel. Uh, eventually, mm -hmm. you ask them for a review so they can share their opinion about your podcast. Make sure they download these episodes and stay connected. Uh, you can start leveraging your audience. I think that's how we, we started. Uh, we, we took Dr. Berg's podcast and we, we set it on fire because uh, we, uh, we, 
use existing audiences. And we went to Facebook Messenger and we let people know about the podcast. Uh, hey, if you guys want to do exercise and still listen to Dr. Berg, we put together a podcast for you guys. Here you go. Uh, we went to social media and we announced the podcast. We added on the sequences. We leveraged the audiences. So if you have an audience, this is your, this is your, your how you get started. This is your, your oxygen to, to get things going and moving forward. Uh, if you don't have an audience yet and you don't have a list of people, well, then you got to start understanding how to use social media marketing uh, to get people to pay attention. Of course, you can go down the traditional route, and I'm telling you based on what I would do myself as a marketer, uh, friends and family, let them know about your podcast. Everybody, share it. Send them a WhatsApp link, a text link, all over the place. Let them know because it eventually, it is it snowballs. It is inevitable. It, yep. it depends on where you are at on the roadmap. Uh, if you guys are just getting started, well, you're going to travel a different journey. If you guys already have 10,000 followers or you got a, a million followers, you're going to have a different roadmap because what you have already could be leveraged. If you have a big channel, that channel will help you skyrocket that, that particular new platform and help you get more attention. So it feeds off of each other. That's a beautiful thing about having existing platforms. But if you're mm -hmm. not just, if you're just getting started, you got to just get your feet wet and use your friends and family, get going and then learn social media marketing so you can start promoting this podcast and getting people to pay attention. Would you say that's correct, Jeremy? Anything else I'd, say like that's 100%, I'd say that's a hundred percent true, man. Like when I started this, I had uh, under a hundred followers on Twitter. So like, it's not like I had, you know, this huge, massive following I could do. It was the amount of action that I was willing to take in order to get it out there. And you know what I mean? Like when I started out, dude, I sent 3000 individual LinkedIn messages all by hand because I didn't know what automation was. And I was like, Hey, subscribe to my show. Um, I had a small email list I built. I individually wrote to every single person on the email list. Hey, subscribe to my show. Took my phone. I texted every single person on my phone. Hey, subscribe to my show. I would be out in public with friends and I'd say, Hey guys, I'm going to actually help you subscribe to my show. So knowing that I took as much action as I could to kind of hustle for what I didn't have and get people to subscribe. You always <laughs> have an option if you're willing to find it, man. That's the word. Hustle is the key word here. If you yes. really want to expand and you want to dream and you want to get yourself to the next level, you're not, you're not going to be able to skip that line. I always tell people about the uh, dream of, uh, uh, passive income and drinking pina coladas at the beach. It's not going to happen. Uh, it will happen one day if you put in the work first. That's just the way yes. it works. Yes. Uh, Jeremy, that's, that's fantastic, man. I think we provided a ton of value to people. Um, how can, if they want to connect with you more, I know you have your own brand, uh, your own mm -hmm. business, command, command your, your brand. Uh, if, if, you, if they want to connect with you more, get some help. I know you help people get on podcast interviews, which yeah. by the way, it's, it's actually a great thing that you can do right now. It's hot. It's undervalued. You can get on other people's podcast uh, interviews and, uh, and have them interview you if you have a message, if you have uh, an ability to communicate. This is something that you can do to take your brand to the next level. Uh, if you want to learn how to, how to, if people want to learn how to do a podcast themselves and you've been teaching that, what, what do you recommend? How do they connect with you uh, later on, Jeremy? Well, if they want to check a, out the podcast, it's once again, it's Create Your Own Life on any platform they want to listen to it on. Um, or if, like you said, we, we really help people to make a huge impact by getting on the right podcast, getting in front of the right audiences. And I actually put together a really awesome white paper for them if they want to check it out. It's called The Seven Reasons You're Not Getting Booked on Your Favorite Podcast. Um, and you can actually grab that over at commandyourbrand.com slash seven reasons. And the word seven or the number seven will work for that. And literally, it is like everything you need to know about basic online PR that's going to help you get on, booked on the right podcast. Commandyourlife.com forward slash seven reasons. Uh, Commandyourbrand.com. Commandyourbrand.com forward slash seven reasons, correct? Yep. Yep, that's okay, correct. Good. We'll, we'll add that on the notes too of this podcast. And uh, you guys can go check that out. Again, this guy, he's for real. He knows what he's doing. So if you guys want to get started, just go ahead and uh, follow that roadmap right there. Jeremy, thanks very much for being here, man. Appreciate it. We got to do it again. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll stay connected and we'll keep on moving forward. And let's, uh, let's put this year, 2020, in the past and look forward to a, a fantastic year in 2021 and beyond, man. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Okay. Talk soon. All right, guys, that was absolutely awesome. Um, great, great show. It's something that I wanted to talk about for a long time, the subject of podcasting. It's such an important subject. I have been preaching to you guys about this subject for many, many years now, and uh, there's still a lot of opportunity. There's still a transition happening uh, over this radio over to the internet. 
uh, less and less people are actually consuming radio. More and more people are connecting their podcasts on their cars and listening to uh, actual radio on the internet. And uh, you'll see it on the cars. There's Apple, uh, Apple Plays, Google Plays, all these things that are happening right now that automatically connects. If you walk into a car now, which is a 2020 model, 2021 model, it automatically connects to your Apple Play and, and you can start playing all these things out. And nobody cares about FM stations anymore. If you guys notice, all these things are changing really, really fast. Uh, you, you're not gonna get a 2021 car or a 2020 car with a CD player anymore. These things are disappearing from the world and FM stations and AM stations are not far behind from that particular evolution. So getting on the podcast world, it's uh, still just getting started. I can see if, uh, you know, one of the things that I like to do and uh, one of my obsessions is kind of like predict the future or try because I am not an expert in the future or like uh, predicting things, but it's, it's common sense. Uh, I can see how natively cars very soon, you're not even going to need your phone to play internet radio. It's going to be all native. You're going to have Apple Podcasts automatically there. There's going to be LTE and 5G networks connected on the vehicle, and you're going to be able to glance through all the podcasts available. It is happening already in some places. I have a Model S Tesla. On the Model S Tesla, I can go to podcasts directly there. I don't need to connect anywhere else. I don't need to use my phone to listen to podcasts on my Tesla. Uh, it's already there. So uh, the Tesla is a good example of how this is all, it's all going to be available in the future long term. So we're just, we're, just, we're just getting started in this world. And it's not too late for you guys to get going and build your own podcast and start building a better future for yourself, your family, and your brand. So again, uh, get into execution. Get some action going. Get it done. Uh, go to Command Your Life, um, commandyourbrand.com forward slash uh, seven, what was it, seven, what was it, Chris? It was uh, seven steps. Say that again? Sorry, I'm like, this is lagging. So um, I still have Jeremy here. It was commandyourlife.com forward slash what, Jeremy? Uh, seven reasons, and the word seven or the number seven will work for that. Okay, there you go. So commandyourlife.com forward slash seven reason. All right. So guys, check that out. And uh, I will see you guys on the next episode. Uh, we got some good things lined up. Next week, I'm going to be interviewed on Damon John's uh, Instagram channel. We're going to be talking about uh, uh, some, some major announcements this next Sunday. Uh, there's going to be some very exciting things happening in the world of Damon John uh, and social media. Uh, so stay tuned. I'm not going to announce it just yet, but he's going to be talking a lot about us and AGM and me and things that are happening here. So we don't know. We're not going to tell you exactly what, but there's some major things happening. I'm going to be interviewed on his Instagram channel next Tuesday, and um, and we'll have some. We have Ezra Firestone lined up uh, right now. Uh, we're going to have Damon John here soon too. So there's some things right now that are in the works. So stay connected. Keep on moving forward. Keep on.